I was sitting here and just looking at things and I've noticed that the solenoid here also runs on 12 volts. Ah! 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 Stuff is unnecessarily complicated. It totally doesn't need to be so complicated. Ah. I'm just gonna make a DC motor with built-in speed control. It's not that hard to do. Someone must have done it at some point in time. Like, back when electric motors were first being made, and they didn't have all this fancy electronic garbage that breaks all the time. Someone back then must have done this thing. It's not that hard to do. Seriously, if I had like a week in a motor factory with a couple of motor design nerds who were not jerks, we could totally design a motor. That would make all this junk obsolete. Anyway, whatever. I'm where I am right now. I can worry about that whole mess later. Uh, I've got stuff here that can work. So let me figure out how to make it work. All right, the only real issue I have here with just getting basic function is this solenoid, which runs on 12 volts, and I will have no 12 volt power supply. Only 24. But that means I should be able to check the resistance on the the electromagnet part inside this. Uh, find a resistor that equals that to take up half of the voltage and then it should work on 24 volts. Now of course the the resistance inside is going to change once electricity is flowing through it but it should have enough kind of uh, wiggle room that I should be able to get away with fudging it a little bit and you know making an estimation. Blah, 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 electronic, electronic, blah, 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 electricity, blah, blah, blah. I was thinking about how to have the switch built into this, so this is not just the throttle, but it's also the forward and reverse. But I just don't really care. So I'm just going to use this as the throttle. Because when I'm driving around, I'm just not going to give a crap. And I think I'm going to put the throttle over here, so I can steer here, and I can go set my speed here, and then the forward and reverse switch, I don't want to put it over here because there's something on the inside there, I want a fan to be there, so maybe I'll put it right up here, just have forward reverse, there, and then I can... I can speed up and slow down and steer at the same time, and I can change forward and reverse and steer at the same time, or I can change the throttle and forward and reverse at the same time. Right, I think that's good. I don't know, let me think about it. When I do get the thing out of the door, I'm going to have to figure out how to drive it down this little cliff here. Well, I always have the option of rotating the entire dome so it could go out that way. Maybe I'll do that. It's not that heavy. I could do it with a pry bar. Probably take like 20 minutes to turn it. All right, before I put any electronics in here, I need to know they're not gonna melt. I need to know they're not gonna melt. So I'm gonna mount one of these fans in here. Oh, here they are. I'm gonna put a fan in here. And then I've got my motor here that has a built-in fan at the back. Uh, and that'll only work when the motor's actually going. But still, I want it to have holes here so that the motor can suck air in from outside to help cool things off. And I'm not so much worried about a lot of heat being made in here as much as I am about sun being on this and just heating it up. Oh, I found this in the garbage months ago. I know what to do with this. Oh, well, before I put that in, I put a, an aluminum pipe from the motor to over there just to keep the motor from moving that way at all. Because it's bolted from the bottom, but, you know, it could move. But now it can't. Anyway, this is going to go in here, and that's where my electronics are going to go, I think. Yeah, I'll just hold that up with some of these right under. Pretty good. 
<laughs> Alright, these things should solve my 12 volt issue. Connecting one in there, and I think I am going to use the stupid relay thing. At least until it breaks. Obviously, I won't use it after it breaks. Alright, how much of this stuff do I not care about? Alright, this whole thing I can take out. I don't care about the amp meters. That's a little thing that'll tell me how many amps I'm using, how many volts and stuff. Uh, it's probably some other stuff I don't need. Okay, I don't need this shunt because that just goes to the amp meter. Let's see, what else? Alright, I can definitely take that out. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Alright, all this battery charging nonsense down here, I don't need that because I'm charging them with solar panels. What the? Oh, I know what that is. Right. Oh no, my motor totally does not have that. Yeah. Alright, we got coming in from the battery to a fuse, to a switch, into the solenoid, to the battery plus, to the relay switch. Alright, this is going pretty well so far and everything looks like it's fitting. Right. Alright, next is that. I am having one minor difficulty though. I just spent most of the day today moving a bunch of dirt by hand to make a new gravel area. So I don't have to keep putting the gravel where people walk, so it can be out of the way. And I can also store more gravel there so I can get more at once. Anyway, it's like five hours straight of power lifting. So now I'm just sweating like a pig. And I'm trying not to sweat all over my electronic bits and pieces. <sighs> Hopefully I should just have a few more days of that. I mean, it is really good physically to do all that work. I feel good. Actually, it's really good to, like, if you've never had the experience of just, like, sweating like crazy, where you're just, like, just everything is sweat, and you feel like you're just sweating through your clothes in seconds, you should do it, because it feels really good. And I know people think, like, ooh, sweat is dirty and it's gross, but when you sweat that much, it's not gross. Because usually when you just start sweating, you're, like, sweating out the all the toxins you've been eating and breathing in from the pollution and everything. So your first sweat stinks and it's like gross. But then when you sweat that off and you keep sweating, your sweat is really clean. Like I don't stink at all right now. And I could get people to back me up on that, but you're just going to have to trust me. <sighs> but anyway, it just feels super clean once you, once you sweat everything out. <sighs> and then like having a shower after that, just like sweating all your dirt out from the outside, from the inside, and then like rinsing off all, all the the sweat that's left. It's like this, it's like the cleanest you can get, in my opinion. And not using soap or anything. Just just rinsing off the sweat. Ah, it's so it feels so good. Uh, anyway, back to my electronical stuff. I'm f I'm filing off the ends of all these things. To get the corrosion off, see, I didn't do it on this side, but this side is the side that does contact, so that'll make sure it has good contact between the copper and this thingy here. Alright, I need to connect from here to here. Uh, well, that's a little excessive. Oh, that one's even more so! Alright. Alright, these were from my pile. Well, that one might be good.